Well, this is just terrible. The news, the uh, death of the miner. What is made worse than anybody could possibly have imagined is that the families know, but they don't know. They know that uh, a miner has died and uh, that uh, the rescue workers have discovered him, but they don't know who it is. And there are four families in there going through hell. You described it as a, as a small hell. I mean, in a way, that was an understatement. If anything, it was an understatement, because to know and yet not to know makes it even worse. As I said to the wife of one of the trap miners, uh, she said to me, you know, I'd have preferred to have been told whatever the news was straight up. And now I've been half told. And that is what makes it so difficult to take. Mm, clearly, all the emergency services, the rescue services, would themselves have been able to like to, like to give them that information, but they just don't have it and they can't get it quickly enough, I suppose. Well, these rescue services are enormously professional, very expert. They have, uh, and the police as well, have uh, given the families support right through most of yesterday and particularly through this long, harrowing and, and dark night. Uh, and uh, that, uh, that means that they, on the one hand, have had to support the families, whilst at the same time uh, carrying on with driving forward with this relentless dedication to try and get uh, to the, the rest of the miners and just hoping against hope that they are in a pocket of air somewhere in this, uh, th these uh, myriad of, of old mine workings. Mm. It, it, they are and remain optimistic to find the other three, but they're working in difficult conditions, aren't they? They have been dedicatedly optimistic that they will do their job to the end. Um, but nobody's been in any doubt, as I've said all along, that this is a very tough situation, a very bad situation, the like of which we're not seen uh, in South Wales, certainly, for generations.